Manchester is perhaps one of the world's most famous football cities, with the Reds versus Blue rivalry capturing global audiences. But here on Keys, we like to bring you some of the sports that you may not know so much about. So over the course of the next half an hour, we're going to bring you some of our best coverage of minority sports. Qualification for the British Water Polo Championships is well underway, but among the excitement, a feeling of shock. UK Sports is cutting £4.5 million of funding ahead of the 2016 Olympics due to slim medal prospects. Nothing's changed in the last 10 months. They're, they're on track to do what they're, what they're set out to do. So I think if they were in a position to be funded 10 months ago, I don't see what's changed. Having represented GB in London, Adam knows the excitement of playing in the Olympics, but is worried about the future. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, once in a lifetime opportunity and it's... It's sad that it looks like it's going to be a long time before GB there again. There was further disappointment among coaches, fans and parents who think UK sports are making a big mistake. The sports that have been given funding at the higher level don't reflect what kids are going to be doing in primary school. The increased funding to things like equestrian, fencing, to me it's a, it's a complete misnomer. It should be spread out more evenly rather than given to the elite who still become more elite become like the Premiership in football. Olympic winners in the past, so should uh, definitely be given some money. We pay hundreds of pounds out every month. We travelled the country. When he played in Sunderland in the qualifiers, the atmosphere was fantastic. We've got facilities like Manchester, we've got facilities like Sunderland. The facilities are there. We just need the money to get the guys in one place and train them. Barring a successful appeal in March, though, the Championships may be the best they can hope to compete in for now. The men, realistically, I don't think will qualify for Rio. The women, with UK sport funding, I think they'll um, qualify. If the funding doesn't get reinstated, then it'll be tough. Will Moorcroft, Keys News, from the Manchester Aquatic Centre. Earlier this year, England women's cricketers retained the Ashes in Australia. It was a further example of the outstanding performances and achievements of the team over the past few years. And next year, during the 2015 Ashes on home soil, more and more people will be able to witness their talents live, as Sky Sports Television and BBC Radio have announced they'll be broadcasting every ball bowled for the first time during a women's series. One of England's Ashes heroines last winter was Mancunian Kate Cross, who believes the development of the women's game goes hand in hand with its increasing media exposure. When I was nine years old, I didn't know who was in the England women's team, but now you can see the girls coming through actually have role models and they, they know who the team are and I think that comes down to the exposure that the, the girls have got. But equally, I don't think that exposure would happen if we weren't doing well. The announcement comes at the end of a hugely positive year for women's cricket, with the central contracts awarded in May, meaning female England players are now full professionals like their counterparts in the men's team, a move that has undoubtedly made the pressures of being an elite sportswoman easier to handle. Well, it just means that we can focus a bit more on cricket and there's no worry about where our money's going to come from because we're, we're being supported by the ECB now. I class myself really lucky as a 23-year-old to be um, a professionally contracted cricketer. So what do the men think of the women's game? I asked another Lancastrian, and Ash's hero, Andrew Flintoff. Yeah, well, the, the women have been successful for a period of time. You know, they've won the Ashes, they've won World Cups. They've been more successful than the blokes in recent years. Everyone enjoys seeing a national side doing well. Um, and England women have done that for a period of time. So the next step is, I was looking at the Ashes fixtures for next year for the women. And there's no, no game at Wards, yeah. which I think is a real shame. You know, they're tending to play on the outgrounds a little bit. But I think the next step for it is to play on the major international venues. Now on the media centre stage, if England women perform in 2015 anything like they have done over recent times, you wouldn't bet against Flintoff's prediction. And in the future we may well see the likes of Cross and her colleagues performing at test match grounds such as here at Old Trafford. David Taylor, Keys TV News, Lancashire County Cricket Club. Last Wednesday, the National Cycling Centre in Manchester played host to a Guardian Live event, Science in Cycling. The debate centred upon what amateur road cyclists can do to improve their performance levels. Head physiotherapist at British Cycling, Phil Burt, argued that part-time racers and amateurs should focus less on expensive equipment and more on basic fitness. He suggested a three-pronged approach. Eat clean. Sleep well and ride hard. Guardian cycling columnist William Fotheringham chaired last week's discussions. He echoed Phil Burt's viewpoint. At grassroots level, fitness and power are king.
You know, at a lower level, power will get you an awful long way. But the higher up the tree you get, everyone's got the power. Mm -hmm. And what sets people apart is tactical skill, yes. technical skill, competitive mindset. Another expert suggested paying attention to descending whilst also looking down at the chain ring. So, for all those two-wheeled weekend warriors in search for PB, it seems there are two unavoidable musts. Keep your eyes down and your legs going round. Ben Rees, Keys TV News. As a teenager, Matt Sidway was British under-17 squash champion and was tipped to be the next British hope on the world stage. But financial constraints have meant that Matt's transition from juniors through to the senior game has been less than smooth. I was slightly let down by England squash in a sense where my strength and conditioning funding with English Institute of Sport was, was cut short. I feel that um, like my coaches were getting paid by the funding and now I have to fund that myself and I think that's been really, really financially difficult for me. And I've had to obviously take up a, a job where I have to work really early in the morning and to get some money to pay for my coaching now. Squash is England's 10th most played sport, eclipsing rugby union and cricket. Matt is currently ranked 270th in the world, the same ranking occupied in tennis by Britain's Liam Brodie. However, with tennis being more prominent in the nation's sporting consciousness, the golfing financial clout between the two is ever increasing. But it just shows the massive divide through tennis and through squash and the, the prize money, so to speak, the sponsorship deals. Like the, it, it's nowhere near the same. I think uh, like Liam Brodie has been, he's probably thousands and thousands of pounds ahead of what I would ever be in, in the game of squash. Perhaps recognising their shortcomings, England Squash have pledged almost £5 million to support elite training programmes over the next four years. Hopefully, for tomorrow's squash stars, the road to the top will be a smoother climb. Ben Rees, Keys TV News. Is it Sunday League football match? Is it a game of rugby? Or possibly even outdoor basketball? Gaelic football isn't quite any of them, rather a mix of the three and definitely something out of the ordinary. To us anyway. So you carry the ball and every four or five every four or five yards you have to solo the ball, which is kick it to yourself. You have to pass the ball using your fist and you can score points by kicking it between a post or in the back of a net. The game has been played in Manchester for over 100 years now and was set up originally for the Irish workers moving to the city at the time. But it is not just restricted to our Gaelic cousins from across the Irish Sea. Absolutely it's growing. It's now played at universities all over the northwest of the UK, which is one of the fastest growing sports currently. Um, here today we've got a new team in our league, so we play, we play out of the county of Lancashire. Currently there's approximately 11 teams in the county, but it is growing and growing. So with the season starting in the coming weeks, there's plenty more to come. Will Moorcroft, Keys News, from Huff End. Philip Hughes, taken from life in his prime. He died playing the sport he loved, cricket. The 25-year-old was wearing a helmet when he was struck by a ball but it crashed into an exposed part of his neck, inflicting massive damage. Well, I think everyone w would agree it's a, you know, it's a terrible tragedy for, um, for his family, obviously particularly his friends and, and of course the cricketing world as well, but um, ultimately, whether he's playing cricket or not, you know, a young man in, his, in the prime of his life has, has lost his life and it's, it's sad. Once the grief subsides, the cricket community will take a long, hard look at safety. But the focus is primarily around the equipment and not the laws of the game. Here at Lancashire County Cricket Club, they look to improve the design of helmets to ensure that a freak accident like this doesn't occur again. This incident will have brought it into sharp focus and there may be a need to look at uh, the integrity of, of, of helmets over a period of time and to make not just recommendations but if a helmet you know, may have a lifespan and to know what that lifespan is. So. All these sort of things are considerations. Whether the game's safer, I think it, it potentially can be safer still following this, this incident. England's captain, Alistair Cook, believes that cricket has never been safer and doesn't want to see the bouncer removed from the game. At grassroots level, some parents of young cricketers agree. Uh, I, I don't think there needs to be any change in laws. I mean, for me, it's one of the, the sort of pinnacles of the sport, really, in terms of playing and batting against or sort of fast, aggressive bowling. At the Emirates Old Trafford, during training, players put out their bats to show a sign of solidarity and the way to share the sadness of the way he died. His colleagues and fans here in the North West 
will remember him in the baggy green cap of the country he represented and the sport he distinguished. Inzi Rashid, Keys News. We've not just watched sports, but our hardy presenters have been right in the thick of the action. A new sport has arrived in England, a tactical and almost vicious sport combining roller skating and racing, roller derby. One of the local teams in the area is the reigning city girls from Oldham. They are an all-female, full-contact roller derby league established in 2008, who compete regularly against other teams in the UK. They held their first ever match of the year on Saturday night against Royal Windsor at their own training venue, the Thunderdome, in Oldham. Hundreds of people turned up to watch and support their local team. Speaking to a few of them, it was clear just how passionate they are about the sport. I've been playing for Rainy City since November. I really love it. It's a great sport. I would say, did you love disco skates when you were a child? Do you love random tights? And do you sometimes have anger inside you, you want to get rid of? In which case, come down. Only been a couple of times, but really enjoying it. So what exactly is roller derby? Well, each team is made up of five players, four blockers and one jammer. The jammer has to get past the four blockers of the opposing team, thus winning points. However, as the name indicates, the blockers have to do everything to prevent this from happening. This makes the game fast, fierce and action-packed. Speaking to the captain after the game, she told me about the, the amount of effort they have to put into the sport, especially their tactics. I think it went uh, as good as we could have expected, really. Um, obviously, the scoreline, we won. <laughs> if you would have seen us maybe like six months ago, you can see that we've become like, tighter and stronger. I, think our I mean, we've always been a very defensive team. And I think we've just like even tightened that up a bit. It's hard to imagine these women in their day-to-day -day lives. However, there are two players from the reigning city girls who are making names for themselves in the roller derby world outside of the northwest. This is the case of players Missy Rascal, aka Kerry, and Randy Razorlegs, aka Faye Roberts. These two have both been selected to represent the reigning city girls at the World Championships in Texas later on this year. It's not been selected yet, but we're on the training squad, so we'll be attending the practices. And um, yeah, so we hope. We're going to try our hardest to get on that We're going to try and get there. I'm Texas. happy just to get yeah, this far. Yeah. The reigning city girls hold training sessions every Monday to get new people involved and show them just how fun it can be. They show beginners the basic techniques of how to skate, fall safely and a few tricks of the trade. I went along to give it a go and I'll tell you now, it's a lot harder than it looks. Even though it's a sport that not many people have heard of, it's fun, fast and everyone should get involved. You've seen the power of both of the Keys TV News from the Thunderdome in Oldham. There's a skill to learn, like drama. Mixed martial arts, it's a mixture of judo, boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, wrestling. Here at the Monkey MMA Academy, they're training the next generation of fighters, hoping to break out into the UFC spotlight. My aspiration is definitely um, going, to, going to the UFC and, and fighting at the top. But it's a the UFC is to MMA what the Diaz, Super League is to rugby. Fighters like Silva and Diaz set the bar for those like Javon who one day aspire to, to compete in main event fights. Looking at UFC like it's a good breadwinner for them. I mean, Javon and Ashley have just turned pro. They've had a hell of a semi-professional um, semi career. So I'm really stoked and excited for, for, their, for their pro debuts. Most people, like, on, on like the MMA scene, don't even know I work during the day. They just think I train most of the time. Ten fights, making sure they're all wins, and then I'll be knocking on the door of the UFC. With only six weeks until his professional debut, don't be surprised to see the name and fight of Javon Morrison beamed across the world. Garani Elavina, Keys News. Fishing. A hobby enjoyed by millions of people is fast becoming one of the most popular sports in the country. And now a charity is keen to get young people literally hooked on fishing. Uh, there's projects dotted around the country. Each one is funded quite differently depending on funding streams and the kind of groups that they work with. But we all have a focus of getting young people engaged in the sport of angling to try and divert them away from crime, antisocial behaviour, um, to improve their behaviour levels in schools or, you know, in the general community. Get Hooked on Fishing is a charity that claims it can provide good opportunities for young people and also boost their confidence for people like me who want to take on the sport. Some are still working with me, you know, and they're still, they're now 18-ish. Their parents have told me that without fishing, they're 
the, their kids wouldn't have had anything to focus on. The charity have said that research proves fishing can help people transform their lives and it's communities like this one in Bolton where they are doing just that. Through my behaviour in school, so the school put me on courses and they said I can go I can go do certain things and I chose fishing because I want to get into it. It calms me down if I get like stressed, say if I get stressed at all I just come fishing and it calms me down. Some might say the increase in young anglers isn't welcomed, but as we spoke with a long-serving fisherman, it was clear this wasn't the case. Well, more young ones, the better. The more young ones, because if you've learned to, right, you can always tell them. Are you with me? Put this into it, it gives them a different perspective. There's something to look forward to. There's something away from going home, having no food on the table, getting beat up, arguments, seeing your mum and dad lose it, whatever, it doesn't matter. But coming here, it's like a break from it. And if you can keep doing it, then, obviously, it'll make you a better person. Get Hooked on Fishing was created to help young people stay clear of antisocial behaviour and inspire generations to take part in a sport that's managed to change people's lives for the better. Oh, OK. In the tree. Bradley Harris, Keys News, Bolton. That's not bad, that. I'm here at the Oldham Thunderdome to meet the Rainy City Roller Girls and find out more about the sport. There are 14 players on each team and five of them go on at any one time um, in a two minute jam. Each team has a jammer, which is a scorer, and they wear a star on their helmet and then they have to try and get past the opposing team to so the other four skaters that aren't on their team and for everyone that they pass to get a point. Formed in 2008, the team moved to their new home in 2011. With the help from Sport England, the club have replaced the floor and added new audience seating. Now the club have taken to Twitter to promote the team using the hashtag ThisGirlCan. The This Girl Can hashtag was great really because it's just raising awareness for women getting involved in activity and sport. So um, to be kind of on board with that, it just kind of suits who we are as well. Um, and it's about women from uh, like every, every different kind of um, background and interests and things like that. We all come together to um, do this one thing but, that you know, we're all involved in. It's trying to make something fun and adventurous accessible to everybody so to show people show other women in particular that you can go out you can do something adventurous it doesn't have to cost a fortune and it can be really fun and you can do it with your friends well, this is the first time we've been and we're just having an absolute blast it's great fun i've had a great time with the rainy city roller girls i'm battered bruised but not beaten this girl can lucy ty keys tv news all day Alongside our coverage of the more unusual sports, we've also kept a keen eye on disabled sport. And when England blind football team came to Manchester, we were there to see what it was all about. It wasn't United or City at the centre of attention for once. The sport of blind football has come to Manchester. The draw for the 2015 European Championships took place at the National Football Museum as part of a football discovery day aimed to bring the disabled game to the masses. Uh, I'm an ambassador uh, for the Royal uh, National College for the Blind. Um, obviously part of that is the, the England football team, uh, blind football team. Um, obviously they're going to be going to the Euros um, very, very soon um, in the summer in August. I've been supporting them now for five or six years. Uh, I got involved all that time ago as a little sort of mini documentary uh, just to sort of promote awareness uh, and since then it's gone from strength to strength. With the event giving the public the chance to don their shooting boots and their blindfolds, Mills hope increased awareness will help develop the sport even further. A lot of the players are now are full time, uh, almost professional uh, if you like. The college has got better, um, it's now a, an institute of sport um, for the blind which is absolutely fabulous and it's just given not just the elite partially sighted um, and, and blind players the opportunity. It's given everybody uh, an opportunity to be involved. I think talking to some of the guys, and obviously this is only at second hand, you can be very, very isolated um, You know, when, when either you go blind or, or you are blind. And I think being involved in team sports, coming together with like-minded people, keeping fit, being healthy um, is part of it. 
but having that camaraderie, um, that banter, if you like, I know that's a banned word, um, but you know, it's brilliant. And although England football fans want to banish the memories of recent major tournaments, the country's blind stars, the championships taking place, the National College for the Blind cannot come quick enough as they prepare to face Turkey, Poland, Italy, and the old enemy, Germany. So I'm Owen Bainbridge. Um, been in the England squad for about five years now. Yeah, I'm Jono, uh, been playing for uh, blind football for five years, five and a half years. Um, for me, basically, it just means everything. It's what we work for, um, it's what we're driving towards all the time. Um, it's just in everything, sort of everything you do. Um, football comes first. Yeah, um, well, ever since being a young lad, you, you want to play for your country play football for your country and, and uh, to get the chance to do that is, uh, is a fantastic feeling. So as England prepare to take on Europe's best, the first challenge is to convince the people that the championships are not to be missed. Lewis Smith, Keystick News. Although most sports require a huge physical effort, some are slightly more relaxed, so we sent our more leisurely reporters to explore the sport of bar billiards. Now, you can't play bar billiards anywhere with the M60 these days, so we've come to Stockport to find out more. Bar billiards was made famous by the TV show The Indoor League in the 1970s. It's billiards with booby traps. Knock down the white or red skittles and you lose your break. Knock the black skittle over and you lose your entire score. We thought we'd have a go. Welcome to the inaugural Railway Cup between the Abergavenny Avenger and Andrew, the cashier from Cheadle, Crompton. And a lovely break-off shot there from the cashier. Remember, red balls count for double. Crompton, an early lead with some smashing play. The Avenger returned to the table and made a huge break to get himself back in the game. Ooh. What a pot that was. He's gone and done another one. It all comes down to the final white ball. Pot it, you win. Knock down the lack, you lose. The cashier up first. Ooh. Useless. Oh no. The Avenger has knocked down the skittle and a crowd furious. That's such an upset. And there we have it, the final scorecard, an upset in the Railway Cup. I spoke to both players after the game. Well, I'm, I'm gutted. I thought I had him on the ropes there in the, in the last few moments, and I thought I was going to get him on the final skittle, but um, he's a good competitor and um, just, just disappointed, really. Pulling a fair few faces out there, uh, it's difficult to keep the disappointment while you're actually playing. Well, I play with my heart on my sleeve, Tom, I think, so um, it's, I, I, I can't hide it at times, and it's, it just comes out. How do you feel after beating Ellis, the Aragaveni Avenger, Lane? Uh, I feel very proud. Um, it was a, a tight game. Um, we hit a big break uh, towards the middle of the match. Um, to come up team and play against someone like Ellis, it was a great privilege. Um, and to whitewash him the way that I did. And considering I only picked up the queue this morning, I've never played Bob Elliott before, so um, it was a bit of a shock for myself. I'd like to take this time to announce my retirement from the sport of Bob Elliott. Um, with a record of 2 and 0, I thought it'd be best to go out in a high. Um, obviously, after beating um, Ellis, um, it was a proud moment. Uh, I'd like to thank all my family, my friends, my mum, my dad. With Bar Elliott's dying out in the northwest, places like this are becoming a rarity. The sport remains popular in the south and there's a thriving league in Yorkshire, so perhaps it won't be long before the people of Manchester are queuing up to play bar billiards. Ellis Lane, Keys News. Cheers. So that's all we've got time for on our Minority Sports Special. But please remember to donate to our fantastic charity, the Joseph Salmon Trust. Up next, there's more sport as Keys Kickabout looks back on the past football season.